beginner pianist and you want to work on some great classical works. Unfortunately, there are thousands of pieces to choose from and it's hard to know where to even begin. Hi, I'm Jayza. There was a lot of request for a part two in the series. So here you go. Here are another five classical pieces that beginners should not skip. For each piece, I'm going to play the start and then briefly talk about the educational benefits of playing these pieces. I'm going to count them down from the easiest to the hardest, so make sure you stick to the end to find out what number one is. And just before we get to the countdown of these pieces, make sure you subscribe to this channel to make sure you stay in touch with more of these free piano lessons and tutorials. Now, number five on the list is... So number five is the Bach Minuet in G. Now this piece is really good for teaching your hands to coordinate with each other. Generally speaking in piano music, right hand has a slightly more difficult part than the left hand. But in this one, the left hand is actually not too much uh, easier than the right hand, okay? So in right hand, you have parts like that. You have this kind of scale part where there are fast moving notes, but left hand also has that later in bar, uh, eight, so. Okay, so I think both hands have relatively equally difficult parts. So it's a good one to try to play to coordinate your hands. The minuet in G is also really good for learning ornaments in music. Now, what are ornaments? In the olden days, composers use ornaments to basically beautify the music. So instead of Instead, it was written as Do you hear that? So this Okay, some people also call these grace notes and this piece is a great introduction to playing these grace notes or ornaments Okay, they're not easy to do so they are very beautiful, but also require a, a great level of technical execution. So this is really great for that. Number four on our list is... so on and so forth. Number four on the list is the starting part of Claire de Lune by Debussy. Now this piece is really great for learning legato. What's legato? Legato is smooth playing or joint playing. So beginners, when they start to learn this piece, if we're practicing without the pedal, they'll play something like that. You know, which is not what we're supposed to do. We're trying to join each thing there, and that's not easy to do. Did you hear that? This one, double notes, but we still need to join them as well. So it's great for legato practice. And the next thing this piece is really great for is actually tied to the first point, And that is that this piece is really great for learning how to play expressively. Now a teacher I had in the past told me there were only two levels of pianists. Level one were pianists who played notes and level two were pianists who played music. And the only difference between these two groups is expression. Now, Claire de Lune is a really deep piece that actually takes a bit of time to understand. So now instead of playing just straight notes like
instead of playing that, I wanna encourage you beginners to try to think about longer phrases. So trying to think about how I can create life out of just these notes. Instead of just trying to hit the right notes, I wanna encourage you to get the right notes and then on top of that, think about how am I going to make this beautiful sounding. Now, if you wanna play the entire Claire de Lune piece, that's probably not gonna be the best piece for a beginner because there are some really difficult parts towards the end. But Claire de Lune is a really familiar tune to a lot of people and, and a lot of people love it. So if you're a beginner, why not just try the start part of it, get a good sense of what that feels and sound like. And then when you get better at piano, you know, two, three years down the line, when you get enough practice and you can take on the technical challenge, then you can complete the whole Claire de Lune piece. I think these kind of things, uh, they act as a great motivator when you learn a part at the start of your journey. And then when you get better to work towards completing the piece when you are better at piano, I think that's an incredible motivator for yourself to practice. Now, moving on to number three on our list. Number three is my personal favorite one out of these five. Number three is... so on and so forth. So number three is To A Wild Rose by McDowell. Now I really recommend you go and listen to the full piece of this on YouTube because this one is so stunning, it just melts my heart. This piece is really good to learn because it will teach you how to control your dynamics. Now in the two phrases that I played, the first time it was supposed to be piano, which is soft. And in the second time, it's supposed to be PP, pianissimo, which means really soft. Okay, so this is really good for just teaching you how to basically have enough control to play even softer. And then there are also a whole bunch of other crescendos and diminuendos everywhere. So good one to learn how to control your volume. Also similar to the previous piece, this one is really good for learning how to play expressively. So instead of just playing the right notes, have a think about how you can play the right notes and create some life from them. Moving on to number two on our list. Number two is... So number two is the Chopin Prelude in A major number seven. Now I recommend this piece to beginners because it's pretty short, it's only 16 bars. If you really work hard at it, you could probably finish learning it in one day. This piece is particularly good also for volume control between your two hands. So generally speaking, right hand should always be louder than the left hand, okay? So just to demonstrate, beginners when they play this piece, they'll play probably something like that. So hopefully you can pick up that this doesn't sound really good. The better way to play is something like that. Where the right hand is standing out a little bit more. Okay, this piece actually is takes this volume control actually to another level because even within the right hand, 
whenever there are two or three notes, you want the top one to stand out even more. So, do you see that? This B, I wanna to try to make that a bit louder than even this G sharp or this D, so. So this is a great piece to work on volume control between your two hands. Okay, moving on to the number one piece for this video, number one is. So number one on the list is the Sonatina in C by Clementi. Now, if you're listening to this piece and you're going, oh gee, that's pretty quick. I don't know if I can pull that off. Now, everything should always start slow. When I first learned this piece, I started learning it really, really slowly. And then only step by step, I would increase the speed. This piece is really good to learn because it has a lot of scale passages. So you could see it had a lot of things like so. Do you see that? That's a C major scale. And then throughout the piece, there are a whole bunch of other running passages as well. So this piece is really great for working on your music, but also a bit of a technical exercise, I guess you could say. This piece is also really great to work on because if you complete the whole piece, this whole work actually takes about seven to eight minutes to perform. So I think it will also build your stamina for piano playing. And lastly, I think this is a really great introduction to the classical sonata genre. So once you study this piece, you'll get a bit of a good introduction to a lot of the famous works by Mozart, Beethoven and Haydn. So I really recommend you to learn this one. It will teach you lots of things. So there you go, guys. Here are another five classical pieces that beginners shouldn't skip. Which one of these pieces are your favorite? And do you have any suggestions of other pieces that you think beginners shouldn't skip? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, have a great day. Subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you in the next video.